Good morning, everyone. Imagine you're in a position where you decide that, well, you want to know the surveillance capabilities of your government. This is nice. Well, everyone wants to know that. But now imagine that if you ask questions and they are required to be answered, that would be even nicer. That's what freedom of information requests are for. And here to tell you about how this can be applied in Italy to determine what the Italian government has capability-wise is Riccardo Colicini. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, hi, hi everyone. I'm Riccardo Colicini. I'm a freelance journalist in Italy, writing mainly for Motherboard Italy and also a member of the Hermes Center for Transparency and Digital Human Rights. What I'm about to introduce you today is a project for monitoring government surveillance capabilities via means of transparency tools. Some background. Uh, the Italian history is peculiar due to uh, organized crime and mafia. There are specific transparency and anti-corruption laws that can help to understand better what is going on for these kind of projects. But when we talk about surveillance, Italian surveillance are well known uh, abroad, worldwide, due to some companies such as ARIA and Hacking Team. They, they are well known for exporting surveillance technologies to authoritarian regimes all over the world, and also Hacking Team for the huge hack which suffers. And my question was, Okay, uh, the surveillance technology developed in Italy are famous abroad, but what's going on in Italy? What are the technologies that the government is using to intercept and surveil its own citizens? What I did, it's basically uh, starting from some open source intel uh, available online. Starting from two great websites like uh, the Surveillance Industry Index and bagplanet.info, which gathers some information on uh, several surveillance companies from all over the world. And specifically, I looked for the Italian one, the main Italian ones. Uh, starting from that, I turned to Google, searching for their value added tax numbers, which gave me uh, some interesting results. What I got were some spreadsheets detailing the payments by the Minister of Interior to each company. Uh, why this happened? Because due to a uh, transparency law, number 33 of 2013, uh, the public sector is obliged to publish uh, their payments. From these spreadsheets, what I got also of the, the money, the, there was also the this, this subject, the tender identification code of what they were paying for. Using the tender identification code, I turned back to Google again. Google it. And what I found were some XML files in which it was detailed all the public procurement data sets of the public sectors. These again, due to anti-corruption law, each public sector, so the Minister of Interior, for example, the Minister of Defense, the Ministry of Justice, and all other public office, are obliged to publish on this uh, XML format, the information regarding their public procurement data sets. So uh, whatever they're interested in buying and there is a public tender, it's going to be published online. This is the format. And given this data, this was my reaction. I had all the ingredients to start monitoring exactly what the government was buying, how much was paying for it, and which were the companies involved. So I constructed this workflow, which is basically, starting from the public procurement data set XML files, I can get the tender identification code and the list of companies participating in the tenders. It's not only the company that won the tender, there are all the participants, which is pretty interesting, because you can discover new companies that you weren't aware of before. Given this data, then the tender identification code and the list of companies, 
Thanks to the Freedom of Information Access law recently introduced in Italy at the beginning of uh, 2017, I can ask for documents regarding invoices issued by the several companies and technical and economic offers of the public tenders. In this way, I can monitor the expenditures and I can get information on the software, the technologies and the devices that these companies are selling to the government. So let's start with some of the results of this monitoring. Uh, the table on the right uh, were the companies which I gathered from the Open Source Intel website. So I was able to more than double the number of companies, and there are more to add. The two that I highlighted are like some peculiar one. There's one which is called NSA Italia, which is a pretty fun name for a company. And <laughs> there's also Telecom Italia which is uh, the second most large uh, telecommunication company in Italy, which is well known, which is big, and which is weird to find it uh, in a database of companies selling surveillance technologies and devices. But we'll see later why. Now I want to focus better on two other companies. The first one is Cyphergate. Cyphergate is a pretty recent new company. It belongs to the group of uh, Electronica, another Italian company. And among their products, two of them are the Wi-Fi Catcher, which is basically a Wi-Fi network monitoring system able to geolocalize and identify the nodes and provide some uh, traffic flow analysis. The, instead, the NetInt is uh, basically uh, an integrated platform which provides you the possibility to surveil phone calls, uh, instant messaging, chats, uh, posts that you make on social medias, and even uh, voice over IP calls. Uh, go and have a look on their Twitter account. It's interesting. There are some interesting pictures. Another company is CPM. This one uh, basically sells uh, jammers, uh, drones jammers also. But uh, looking to the tenders, there was a tender regarding IMC catchers. And uh, CPM Electronica uh, is stated to be the official reseller of the Selxion company, which is a, a, an English company selling uh, IMC catchers. So this is one of the results that we can get with this approach. We can discover also official resellers of companies that are based abroad, but can somehow are selling devices that the government, the Italian government, is interested in. Still remaining uh, on the topic of IMC catchers, this is uh, the XML data that you get regarding the, the tender. So on top, there's the subject, the providing an IMC catcher system. Then there are the list of participants. There are some uh, well-known names. And there's also Telecom Italia. So Telecom Italia, our telecommunication company, Italian telecommunication company, participated in tender in 2015 for uh, an IMC catcher system. They didn't win. The company that won at that time was Ital Arms, the, the first one on top. Regarding MC catchers, uh, still, you can get some information from the, uh, the technical specification that the government is requesting to these companies. So, uh, yeah, they're asking for the downgrade, so passing from 3G to 2G, from 4G or 3G, so to weaken the security of the communications. And they're provided also uh, a scheme of what they would like their, the IMC catcher to provide to, to the authorities. So you see, to basically to track and provide some location targeting, um, following around the, the specific target, collecting, as you see at, at the center, the uh, IMC and the email numbers. This was regarding IMC catchers. So let's try to build the real, the proper toolbox of what they, they're interested in. What about internet surveillance, internet interception? What I found, uh, there was a project uh, which belongs to the National Operative Plan, which is a, uh, a plan to, to foster the, the development of companies in south of Italy, which is using uh, European money and Italian public money to fund these kind of projects. This project, which was uh, held by the company RCS, which is another well-known surveillance company in, uh, in Italy, from Italy, was basically to provide some uh, internet probes 
to provide a lawful interception of data, traffic interception regarding a specific user, or even uh, intercepting traffic uh, from or to, uh, towards a specific site. What was weird is that the, the tag of this project, uh, highlighted in yellow, it's for cultural activities. So they basically said this project regards uh, the culture sphere, but there are, s it's not, it's uh, an internet probe for interception. The total cost of this project was a little bit more than 900,000 euros. Uh, it was approved in 2006, and it received 133,000 euros of public uh, funding. And the last payment was due on uh, January 2015. I filed a request, a freedom of information request, to receive and obtain all the documents regarding this project, since it was funded with public money. But the answer I got was a no, a huge no, due to uh, intellectual property issues for the company and to uh, the secrecy of the technology itself for a national security standpoint, which is a pity. Next, let's think about the, the social media and the, all the posts that we do online. The Ministry of Interior has bought a system for social media intelligence, the project, the code name project, it's crime, which is... <laughs> what does this system do? It's basically, uh, its aim is to uh, provide a media monitoring system to gather all audio files available online from social media, so Facebook, Google, YouTube, and everything. And basically doing that via crawling, scraping the these web pages, transcribe the audio file that they get, identify the speakers, and store a database of voice fingerprints, which are pretty concerning. The, the Data Protection Authority, the Italian Data Protection Authority, uh, has opened an, an investigation into this, and it uh, has requested the more documents and information to the Minister of Interior, because this specific uh, system would like to be implemented uh, to fight terrorism. But the, the power of these instruments regarding the disability to crawl, scrape, and also how are these voice fingerprints stored in the database? What are the safeguards? What, what is going to happen? This is not clear. But luckily, I filed a freedom of information request access, which was granted partially. What happened? The Alma Wave company, the one on top on the right, uh, won the tender, but they refused to provide their technical offers due to intellectual property issues. But they received some other, for example, from RCS, Vitro Ciset, that are other well-known companies. And this is an excerpt from uh, the Vitro Ciset technical uh, offers. And you see on the left side all the public channels, including Tor, uh, Yahoo, Google, Reddit, and basically uh, how they would like to stream so know who is there and then to pass through, because you also have a knowledge, understanding of what's the meaning. And the system also translates, so it gets audio from several languages. All these documents that we obtain will be published uh, probably at the beginning of the 2018. They're in Italian, so we have to understand how to properly translate them or make them available to all the community. But let's move on. Uh, recently here in Germany, uh, I read an article on the Berlin train station. They're going to test a uh, face recognition system. Well, uh, Italy wants to do the same, or actually maybe a little bit more. What they did is, uh, at the beginning of uh, this year, they've bought a system, a face recognition system for a project called Sari, which is basically uh, a face recognition system. This is the architecture, uh, a picture taken from their uh, technical specs requires. So you have these, basically on the right, the AFIS, it's the, the database of, uh, let's say, the, the mug shots, the, all the images that they already have of uh, criminals. They would like to have uh, these several applications with several engines using several uh, face recognition algorithms to find the specific uh, person contained in the image. 
the system is split into two different parts. There's a, an enterprise version, which uh, has to deal with 10 million uh, images, and which is basically a, a static version. So you, you, have a min you have an image, you would like to know if the person on that image is present in your database. The other one is a real-time one, which needs to work together with 10 CCTV cameras that they bought in this tender as well, to be deployed uh, according to their necessities around Italy. Uh, the system will spot the, the person in real time comparing to a watch list of 10,000 uh, images, which are mm, concerning numbers, both on the, for the 10 million images and the 10,000. Um, sorry? We, uh, we filed a Freedom of Information request also for those uh, uh, technical offers, and we, we had some issues, because uh, um, they only provided the technical offers of the company that won the tender, but uh, uh, Obscure, they redacted some, some passages, so it's not completely clear what the engine used. But again, also for the system, the Italian Data Protection Authority opened an investigation asking for more information to the, to the Minister of Interior. But let's move on. What we can request with our freedom of information law in Italy? We wanted to request invoices. So this is an example of, the, of an invoice that I request for the company area. That you see that they come redacted. So they wanted to remove some specific detail regarding investigations. But they basically provided us with documents. So this is a... Uh, this is good, this is a leverage, because we have a precedent. They provided us some uh, invoices. I'm keeping uh, asking uh, new invoices, so they're coming, we are collecting them. We would like to understand how much they expand on these uh, technologies. So far, I've been talking about the Ministry of Interior. The, this project can be applied also to the Minister of Defense and the Minister of Justice. With the Ministry of Interior, though, there are some caveats, because the transparency laws uh, differ, are not so powerful as in other cases, but still, we can get some information. This is a, a PDF document detailing the, the expenditures of the, of the defense uh, regarding some, some communication intelligence, uh, the empowerment of communication intelligence systems. A pretty interesting one, is the one I lighted, which is uh, a Beagle system developed by the company Expert System. And this Beagle system, it's, uh, it's used to select the intercepted traffic and to uh, provide a sort of speech-to-text translation, so to transcribe it. And here you can see more details. Yeah, we would like to think about it as some sort of weaker version of XK score, but yeah, because basically you have some searching criteria, parameters, you can search, connect, and provide a, a comprehensive understanding of the, of the target, of your target. So, uh, what was my initial question? What are the tool, what's inside the toolbox of the Italian government? Looks like the Italian government has acquired everything that it needs, everything that other Bigger nations use, such as face recognition, social media intelligence, uh, and internet interception, and MC catchers. But what's next? Uh, we would like to keep uh, filing this Freedom of Information request to get all the invoices and technical and economic offers. We would like to expand the database of companies, because there are some missing companies. For example, Akin Team, there was uh, no information regarding that, but we are trying to find companies connecting to them. And this would be really helpful, because uh, if we find the companies that are participating in the tenders, we know more companies that are trying to sell this kind of technologies, and we can somehow link them to Akin Team or other more important companies. Another point, an interesting point, is to push the government on the expenditures. So how much is it spending? not only on a privacy-concerning point of view, but also on the expenditure's point of view. How much does it cost to surveil your citizens? And with this, in this way, we can somehow understand it. 
what is missing so far is uh, to analyze the legal framework uh, that uh, lets the government use such technologies. So far, it's quite blurred. There's no, for the face recognition, there was not even a mention of terrorism threat. It was like, yeah, we want to buy this face recognition system and use it in public events, which is concerning, which is not even like the social media intelligence system only for terrorism-related issues. And something more, we would like to involve activists from other countries because we think that this framework could be, could be applied, could be exported to other countries. And to do that, specifically, uh, there's going to be a workshop right after this talk at 2 p.m. at the Rights and Freedoms Assembly. Uh, how's it going to work? There is a, a Horizon 2020 funded project, which is called DigiWist, the Digital Whistleblower, which is uh, providing a platform uh, for a contability mechanism to understand what's the situation of the nations in Europe, but then uh, the workshop is, if anyone is interested, we can discuss over other uh, nations. And from this, yeah, coming to the workshop, uh, we can see how the public procurement data sets are available, how, which laws provides in the other countries the availability, the possibility to apply this same framework to understand how your country is uh, acquiring such technologies and techniques. So I invite you to, if you're interested, to come to the workshop later. Yeah, that was it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Uh, we have four microphones here in the hall that you can line up behind for questions. And we also have plenty of time for questions. Are there questions from the internet? No questions. In that case, microphone number one, please. Hi. Um, so when you were starting out your investigation, you said you looked at Bug Planet and the other website for Italian companies that are providing surveillance equipment. Uh, are the, are there laws in Italy specifying that the surveillance technologies have to come from domestic suppliers, or why was there a no choice to focus solely on specifically Italian companies? Uh, not sure on the laws regarding the domestic supplies for at least, I don't think that for the, the Ministry of Interior there are any constraints, such kind of constraints. What I wanted to know was like, um, I basically started from that because they were like the, the well-known companies. And basically then I found that in my hands. So it basically dropped in my hands and was like, okay, let's start digging deeper. So it's, yeah, I don't want to focus only on Italian companies. Yeah, if any foreign companies pop up in the tenders, I will surely follow that, uh, the trail for sure. So yeah, there was no specific reason why I did that. One question from the internet via our signal intro, please. Yes, um, are mm, these tools under secrecy? Uh, under secrecy, um, well, when I requested information to the police if these technologies were being used, how, how many times, how often, and that stuff, they didn't reply, they didn't say anything. So I hope that the Data Protection Authority can understand better what's going on. And of course, I will, will try to, to see if, there's been any, or if, I, if it's already been used. So yeah, not probably under secrecy, but kind of. Microphone number two, please. Hello. Uh, did you ask the ministry what is the relation between the culture and uh, IP surveillance? Uh, I requested that in the Freedom of Information request I made to... I did that to the Ministry of the Economic uh, Development because it was the one on uh, holding that uh, the kind of project, but they didn't reply on that. So, Microphone number four, please. Um, ciao, Riccardo. Allora, um, tendering in Italy, if I'm right, is something limited to offers higher than 80 or 100,000 euros. So do you, do you know, do you have the feeling that there is some 
obfuscation by going below the tender line in order to not go into the public for into those databases. I, I didn't specifically check on that, but that's certainly a point. I mean, from this uh, study, clearly there is something uh, missing. For example, the, uh, the Trojans, they're not appearing. They're not there. But this also because probably uh, I need to dig deeper into the Ministry of Justice because it's, they are uh, buying this technology. So, yeah, not sure if they're doing that on purpose, like lowering the, the amount for, for the tenders, but definitely there is something missing. So this is not comprehensive. It's still an ongoing and still to search more. Another question from the internet. This is a three-part question. Are there any big newspapers in Italy interested in your research results? And are the Italians conscious of the surveillance? And is there a public debate about it? Well, um, it depends. The, the face recognition system got some attention. Uh, since I'm a freelance journalist writing for Mandible Italy, I basically wrote some articles on that. But uh, the media not so didn't take on this uh, on this kind of research yet. I hope they would, I hope they will because uh, I need help for sure. If anyone wants to dig deeper to find something else, we will provide the data and it's going to be public available online. So yeah, uh, the public debate in Italy on privacy. It's quite tough because we recently introduced uh, a new data retention law which strikes the, the, the time of retention up to six years, which is uh, a lot and which doesn't make completely sense regarding to what are the principles at, the, at a European level. So, yeah, Italian people are concerned about this, but probably not enough. Do we have any more questions? It does not look like it. So, a very warm and pleasantly felt the workshop. Thank you, Ricardo Colicini.